This is the highly acclaimed DJI Mini 3 Pro, the brand new drone from DJI that has a mass of under 250 grams. Now this I'm sure needs no introduction, um, but if you do want to know more about it, there are a ton of videos on YouTube. So um, today I'm just going to talk about a couple of things that I feel are uh, uh, a bit you know, maybe um, incorrectly mentioned on DJI's website about the, uh, the the drone itself or maybe there's a little um, element of false advertising involved um, but we'll get into that shortly um, but just before um, going into those technical details um, I just want to say a couple of quick things about the uh, the drone so as a whole it's a, a fantastic unit and I don't think you'll find anything better in the sub 250 grams category um, don't be surprised if you see many manufacturers um, competing under 250 grams in, in the coming months or years, um, the reason for that is as soon as you exceed 250 grams, um, a whole different set of rules apply. So you need a, a pilot ID, uh, which means you need to take an exam, a, um, online exam, you need to study for it. And then you wouldn't be able to overfly uh, sort of residential places and cities and things like that so the goal now is to pack as much technology as possible in a drone that weighs in at under 250 grams and i think in that respect dji has done very well so once again this is the mini 3 pro and as you can tell it's a pro model uh hence the name pro at the end of it so um there are a couple of complaints that people have um complained about um the one you hear quite often is the gimbal uh, being quite difficult to sort of, uh, well, the gimbal cover is quite difficult to install because you've got to, I mean, remember that the uh, camera and gimbal sort of pivots freely and you have to sort of get the whole assembly slotted in the cover before it's able to, to hook into place and that can be a little tricky, especially if you're out in the field. So uh, it may take a bit of practice, um, but one hack that many uh, people have suggested is to keep the original foam insert that came with the, uh, the drone. And what you do is, if I can sort of show you on the camera, when you're not using the drone and you want to, to store it, just slide the foam insert behind the uh, camera gimbal and that stops the camera from moving around and that will make it a lot easier to slot it into place inside the gimbal protector cover and that snaps on right so let's talk about three things that i feel um at least for me i don't really like uh with with uh what dji has done um the first being they've removed glonass support which is very strange because if you look at all smartphones that have been out in the market for the you know past decade or even more if you look at sat nav units you know G uh, gps trackers or speed meters and all that they always support a minimum of gps and glonass followed by the newer networks like Beidou and galileo uh, uh the european the new european network uh, DJI has removed support for GLONASS with this um, Mini 3 Pro for whatever strange reason. So now it works on GPS, Beidou and Galileo. Um, unfortunately, uh, that I feel is not very wise because GPS and GLONASS are the, uh, the most uh, mature and um, long-running satellite navigation systems in the world. Um, so as you know, uh, GPS is American, GLONASS being Russian. Russian, uh, They've been operational for many years now, whereas Beidou and Galileo are, are very new systems um, and the coverage isn't as good um, and, and things like that. But anyway, that aside, right, let's talk about two more serious uh, matters that I, I feel DJI has um, sort of incorrectly specced or, or mentioned on their website, um, which is... Um, Kind of puzzling. So the first being, if we have a look at the battery here, right? If we look at the chemistry, it's right at the top. It says lithium iron polymer rechargeable battery. Now this is um, 
contrary to what it actually says on the website because um, if you look at the specs for this drone on the website, it says very clearly that the battery chemistry has now changed to the new Lini Menko uh, chemistry. So Lini Menko is the, the new uh, battery chemistry that is uh, making headlines now and it's um, going to slowly replace applications like drones and other RC products because they are a lot safer than lithium polymer. Uh, batteries um, and they're very that's a very new chemistry and that's like the way to go but as you can see here despite what it says on on the uh, specs it's still a standard lithium polymer battery so i'm not sure why um right maybe they'll release an uh you know a uh, battery that you can buy in the future um like an additional battery that's actually got a new chemistry on it so right that aside um the drone itself, I've got one big complaint actually, um, and that being the camera, despite being advertised as a HDR camera, isn't actually a HDR camera. And that's a bit disappointing because on the website it says it's able to record at 4K 30 frames per second in HDR mode uh, or 4K 60 frames per second at um, in standard SDR uh, mode. However, I've tried recording videos in both uh 4k 30 and 4k 60 and when i look at the metadata on on my pc i can guarantee you that they are both identical except the frame rate and the beat rate obviously but everything else from the color space to the um the chroma sub sampling and everything they are uh, exactly identical so i don't get the difference between recording at 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second um even though on the dji fly app it does say that it's recording at 30 frames per second in, in HQ, which stands for high quality. But um, why is it called high quality or HQ on the DJI Fly app? But on the product sheet and on, on the website where they sell the unit, they call it HDR. So uh, that's a bit puzzling. And um, unfortunately, the videos that I've uploaded to YouTube, they don't play back in HDR for, for obvious reasons. Um, that's a bit disappointing. Uh, other than that, it's a great uh, drone to, to, to play around with and to fly. It's very reliable, not had any problems with it. Um, I do hope that um, DJI would fix this uh, uh, lack of HDR issue in a further firmware update or something. Um, I'm not sure if that's possible because I don't know, you know how the camera system works. Um, although they did say it has a native HDR sensor in the camera, so that might be possible, but... At the moment, it doesn't support HDR, you know, despite it being advertised as as, as uh, having support. So that's my biggest complaint. Um, and just thought that those are things uh, you might want to know before buying one of these. Right, that's it from me. And thanks for watching. And please leave any questions in the comment sections below. Thanks.